Eighth grade math test 20, problem number one. We're going to um, simplify the expression they gave us first by going inside and multiplying powers of the same base means I'm going to add, there's a one there, right? One plus negative one is zero. And at this point, this is when we multiply the exponents. So zero times three is zero. So I look at my expressions, the first one, expression one. When it's written like this, when I got power times a, a, a power times a power, they have the same base, I copy the base. I, I uh, add the two exponents. That's a shortcut for multiplying these. And 6 plus negative 6 is 0, so that's the same thing. Expression 2, this is why I'm dividing powers with the same base. So I copy the base and subtract the exponents. I go top minus bottom, and I get the same thing, 6 to the 0. Next one, we have a combination of both, so I'm going to go up to the top and do that first. That's where I add the exponents, and then I copy the bottom, and that's where I subtract the exponents. Again, I get x to the 0 power. And the fourth expression, I have... Uh, x, which is just which is the same as x to the first. That, that's not x to the zero. So the only ones that are the same are expressions one, two, and three. Problem two says which integer is closest approximation to this? Well, we've got to narrow it down. If I look at my two perfect squares and I multiply 29 times 29, that's 841. 30 times 30 is 900. And so then, uh, remember, those are consecutive, right? And I narrow it down. I go 10 times 10 is 100. 20 times 20 is 400. 30 times 30. I narrow it down, right? And then I get the two that surrounds it, and then I ask myself, which one is it closer to? So I, t I take a look at the perfect squares, right, not the square roots, and if I look at the perfect squares and I subtract those, I see that 850 is 9 away from 841, the square root of 841, or 29. 850 is 50 away from the square root of 900, which is 30, which means 850 is closer to this perfect square, or in other words, that square root, so it's about 29. Three, we have to find the product, so I take my two coefficients, the two numbers in front, and I multiply those two. I'll show that work down here for you. Go ahead and pause the video and do that yourself. Make sure you get that. And now when we do the, uh, the powers, just like before, we copy the power and add the exponents. So I bring those two together, and I'm done. Now, if that decimal is in the wrong, sp wrong place, I'd have to do that. Remember, we do three arrows that lesson, and that would affect the exponent there, right? If it was big, I'd have to add the number of exponents that I moved the decimal. If it was a small number, I'd subtract the number of exponents that I moved the decimal. Number four says, find the value of k. In other words, we're just solving these. So I look at four, and I go ahead and draw my elevators. I always do um, a rule for subtraction if I can. And I always distribute and then combine like terms. So I don't have to distribute here, so I'll just combine like terms. I add the constants with the constants, in other words, 4 plus k, and the k's with the k's, the coefficients. I'll look at those, negative 5 and positive 1. I add those two together to get negative 4. Remember, you're not doing any inverse operations when, no, when they're on the same side. So if it's negative 5k, I don't think add 5k. I just treat it like a negative 5k when they're on the same side. So now that they are both simplified, I can go to step two, but there's no k's on this side. Step two is done. Get our variables on one side. Step three, isolate the variable. So I'm going to work farthest away from the variable. Now that I'm moving stuff away from the letter or getting the letter alone, now that I'm doing that, that's when I start doing opposite. So if it's positive 12, I subtract 12, but I do it to both sides of the elevator, right? So I have negative 4k equals 0, 12 take away that, and divide both sides by negative 4. If that's a negative coefficient, you've got to divide by a negative number. 0 divided by anything is just going to be 0, right? Problem number 5, that's our solution. Problem number 5 says, and it looks like we're solving this one also. So um, we're going to distribute. Half of 4x is 2x, half of 8 is 4. Just copy everything else down. Combine your like terms. So again, we simplify before we start moving anything to a uh, different side. So now I work farthest away from the variable doing inverse operations. If I do teams, there are more negatives than positives. That's why my answer is negative. Divide by the coefficient, and negative divided by positive is negative. Answer is negative 2. Next, equation 6, we're going to, um, excuse me, problem 6, we have some equations. We're going to figure out which of these has no solution. So all we're going to do is simplify both sides. We don't even need to solve these. If I simplify both sides of all these equations, then I can make a decision on how many solutions it has. And for this problem, we're deciding which of these have no solution. So whenever I have a negative outside, uh, I should have done my rule for subtraction there first. Sorry, I didn't do that. But I'm going to distribute a negative 1. Negative times 2x is negative 2x. Negative times negative 5 is positive 5. In other words, I'm taking the 
opposite of everything inside of there. And the opposite of 2x is negative 2x. The opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. That's how you distribute a negative that's outside of parentheses. That's already simplified. And here's the rule. If I ever have different coefficients, different numbers in front of the variables, then there's automatically one solution. I don't need to go on to find that one solution because this is one of those qu questions that's asking how many solutions are there and specifically which of these have no solution. So equation two, I go through there. I'm going to do the rule for subtraction first. Over here, I'm going to do add the opposite, draw two sticks. I'm going to do minus outside parentheses. Remember, we're going to take the opposite of everything in there or I can draw two sticks and put a negative one. That's like distributing a negative one. Now when I distribute, I got 5 times x, which is 5x, 5 times 2, which is 10, not 2. I copy the rest, copy the rest. Over here, negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. Negative times positive over here is negative. Now I combine like terms. I add my co uh, constants over here. 10 and negative 1 is 9. Over here, 7x and negative 2x is 5x. Now that both sides are simplified, I can stop and make a decision. If I see they have the same coefficients and the same constants, I don't need to finish solving that. I automatically know this is infinitely many solutions. So none of these so far fit the bill. So let's go on to number three. Number three, I'm going to do rule for subtraction on the left side and distribute on the right. Two times x is 2x. Two times 2 is 4. Over here, I just drew two sticks. Drew two sticks, right? Now I'm going to combine like terms on the left side. I'm going to add my two constants, negative 3 and negative 1. Negative 3 and negative 1. Well, I don't know why I got positive 3. That's a mistake. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. Negative 3 and negative 1 is actually negative 4. Over here on the other side, negative 5x plus 2x is negative 3x plus 4. So I look at this and I see that I have the same coefficients and I have different constants. This one's positive, this one's negative. So when I have the same coefficients and different constants, that's no solution. So that's one of our answers. Let's, let's check 4, though. We're going to simplify 4. I'm going to do the rule for subtraction. Add the opposite here, add the opposite here, here, and here. Distribute. So I'm actually distributing a negative 9, right? Because I added the opposite. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Negative times, nine times negative 1. Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. Over here, there's nothing to distribute, so I'll just combine like terms. I have 2x plus a negative 2x plus a negative 9x. Well, these are opposites. When you're adding opposites, they just cancel out, don't they? Or you can go out to the side and do teams with all three of those coefficients. You're going to get the same thing. It's negative 9x either way. Now I need to add like terms over here. 5 plus 9 is 14. I see I have the same coefficient. Different constants. That's no solution. So that's part of our answer. So our answers are equations 3 and 4 have no solution. Problem number seven, we have to say for this equation, which of the points given are solutions. So what we're going to do is we can go ahead and plug these points in. This is x and this is y. So I put the y where the y goes, the x where the x goes, and I just copy the rest of the equation down. And then I simplify. One-fourth times negative four. Well, if I put negative, one, uh, negative four over one, do my factor trees, cross out my ones, I get negative one. One-fourth of negative one. Uh, one-fourth of negative four is negative one. Use my teams to add those two together, and I get different numbers. This is not a true equation, so this point right here is not a solution for this. This point right here is not on the line or the graph of that. Let's check the next one. Two. Put the y here, the x here, into this equation up top. Simplify. Zero times anything is zero, and zero plus three is just three. This is true. Three equals three. So this point right here is on this line. In other words, this point is a solution to that line. Next one, I'm going to put plug in again. One-fourth of four is one. One plus three is four. That worked out. That's a solution as well. And the last one. Plug it in. One-fourth times negative eight. You should get negative two for that. If not, remember, put make this a fraction. Factor trees cross out your ones. And then when you simplify this using teams, that's not true. So the only two points that they gave us that are solutions to the equation they gave us are points two and three. Problem number eight, they give us a graph. And so for number eight on the graph, we're going to have to take a look at the slopes because uh, the directions say this. Please read the directions because they change on these. They're not always the same. So this time we're looking for which of these relations down here has a greater rate of change. So we're looking for a greater absolute value. In other words, find all the slopes and see which one is bigger absolute value. So for the line here, if I take two points that are on the lattices, here's one at 0, 1. Here's another one at 1, negative 2. 
and I do rise over run, I can see this is a negative slope, so I'm going to fall one, two, three, and run one. So I got a slope of negative three. Now again, we're just looking at absolute value. We don't look at negatives and positives for that to, to decide how steep it is, because something can be negative and still be steeper than something that's positive. So I take a look at relation one. Relation one is a table. And so what I'm going to do is, since I don't see any zero zeros, I don't see any shortcuts, I need to take two points, like we always do, two points, and go y minus y. Now remember, I can start on the right side and do y, y minus y, as long as I do the same thing on the bottom for the x's, x minus x. I get a slope of 4. 4 is greater than 3, the absolute value is, so that's a steeper line. Relation 2, they give me another table. I'll pick any two points. It doesn't matter what two points I get. It should be a constant or always the same rate of change, right? So I'll take any two points I want. Again, I'm going to go right minus left to avoid negatives, but I have to go right minus left on the bottom to avoid negatives. Uh, well, whether we avoid negatives or not, you still have to keep the same order. So I'll go 42 minus 17 over 10 minus 5, and I get a slope of 5. That's steeper than 3, because 5 is more than 3. The next one, relation 3, is a, an equation. It's already in slope-intercept form. So the coefficient is the slope in 7 fifths. Well, 7 fifths converts to about 1.4, which is not a greater absolute value than 3, so that's not steeper. And relation 4, now, by the way, it has nothing to do with the fact that it's an equation. It's just to do with the fact that the slope is not as steep as this slope. Next one, I take two points again. Actually, they only give me two points. I have to use the two points they give me. I'll go y minus y over x minus x, and I get a slope of 6. So all of the relations that have steeper slope is 1, 2, and 4. So we're looking at problem number 9 now. Problem number 9, um, we're going to describe the solution to this system. So in other words, we have to solve this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two points, and I'm going to pick the equation that has... Uh, the easiest variable to isolate. So if I see any letters with no numbers in front, that's the one I want to isolate. So this time I'm going to isolate x, right? We usually isolate y because y is slope-intercept form. But for solving systems, it's okay if you isolate x, if it's easier. So I'm going to add 8y to both sides. And look, I don't add the 8y and the negative 25 because they're not like terms. So to isolate this x so I can use the substitution method to solve this system, I just add 8y and I put an 8y next to that negative 25. That's how you add them together. Can't combine them because they're not both y's, right? So this is this equation now. I'm going to plug it into the other equation, the first one they gave me. And I'm going to plug that into this spot right here where the x goes, right? We normally put it where the y goes, but this time since I isolated x, I put it where the x goes. I use parentheses and I just solve this equation. Again, rule for subtraction, distributive property, Negative 2 times 8y is negative 16y, plus negative times negative is positive 50. Copy the rest down. Combine your like terms. I combine my y's. See? I didn't combine these two up here because they're not both y's or they're not both constants. But if they're both y's on the same side, you get to add them together. And now I'm going to solve this equation. And since I'm moving stuff, I'm going to move this 50 first, right? Move work farthest away from the variable. Then I do the opposite of what I say. That's when I do inverse operations. These two are on the same team, so I add them. They're both on the negative team, so negatives have more. Divide both sides by the coefficient. Negative divided by negative is positive. We know the y value. In order to get the x value, I'm going to use this equation that I made earlier. Because x is already isolated, I plug it in where the y goes, and I simplify that, and I see x is negative 1. So now I can describe this solution. It's a point at negative 1, 3. That's where these two lines intersect. Now remember, if you guys did this process right here, and you ended up canceling out the x or the y, there was no variables, then you would look and see if the equation is true, such as 3 equals 3, then there's infinitely many solutions. If it's not true, like 2 equals 3, you would say no solution. Okay? Infinitely many would mean they're the same line. No solution means they're parallel lines. They don't hit. Because remember, solving a system means you're finding where the two lines intersect. All right. Moving on. Number 10. Number 10, we have an equation, and they want to know which of the given equations will make infinitely many solutions. In other words, like I said earlier, which ones are the same line. So what we'll do then, the fastest way to do this problem is just to put them both in slope-intercept form. I'm going to add 2x to both sides, so this equation is also y equals 2x plus 8. I look at the first one they give me. They give me uh, a 
negative 8x plus 4y equals negative 24. So what I'm going to do is add 8x to both sides to isolate the y to put it in slope-intercept form. Divide everything. This is where you divide everything. Remember, draw a line under everything. And I get y equals 2x minus 6. That's not the same as the first one, so that's not infinitely many solutions if this were a system that I solved. So I look at b, do the same thing. We're going to isolate y. I do the opposite of negative 4x. I added 4x to both sides. Can't combine these two because they're not like terms. Divide by the coefficient. And I see that another way to say this equation is 2x minus 4. That's not the same as this one, so it wouldn't make infinitely many solutions. Again, work farthest away from the y, do the opposite of negative 6x, add 6x to both sides. Can't add these two because they're not both x's, so I just write them next to each other. This is positive, that's positive up here. This one was negative, that's why that's negative. Divide everything by negative 3, draw a line under everything. When you simplify this, you can do factor trees and cross out your 1's. Or if you know 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2, just put the x out to the side. I see that this is almost the same, but not quite. So that's not. This will have one solution. Uh, actually, yeah, this will have one solution too. That won't have infinitely many. So hopefully it's d. I take d. I add 6x to both sides. Divide everything by 3. Pause the video and do the work yourself. Come back and check with me when you're done. And I see that I get the same thing, so D is the answer. This equation would have infinitely many solutions with the first one they gave me. Next problem. So for 11, they say one music streaming company charges $12 per month and no initiation fee. Another is 10 per month with $10 initiation. Find the number of months till they're the same. Okay, so what we don't know is number of months because they said find months, right? So let X equal the number of months, or M. So for one company, the cost, remember, money's always Y, time is always X. So the cost is 12 times $12 per month, or 12 times X. The other one, the money, or Y, is 10 per month, or 10X, plus $10 initiation. That's a one-time deal, so no variable goes next to the, uh, the starting point. So when are they the same? Well, I set them equal to each other. Solving system, substitution method. This goes in for the Y, and I solve. Subtract 10x from both sides, and I find that they're the same at five months. All right, next problem, number 12. So, for the following examples, which relations are functions? Now, uh, relation one is, is an equation, and most equations are going to be functions that you see in eighth grade, but if you ever see like a y squared or absolute value of y, those are not functions because those will fail the vertical line test. Okay? So just to get us to the test for now, we just know if we're looking for y squared or absolute value of y, that is going to be not a function. All right. So relation two, looking at relation two over here. Uh, where am I at here? Relation two is a set of points, right? So they give us a set of points. So if I look at these set of points, I'm looking to see if any of my x's repeat. 